if I manage to make this ugly, then I really am in the wrong game. So I'm starting a new project today, even though I know I shouldn't be, and I've got loads of other projects on the go, but I'm excited about this one right now, so I wanna harness that momentum and just get going with it. Try not to judge me. I have started to put together a mood board to try and solidify my thoughts of where I want this to go, and I'm sure you can already see what I'm trying to achieve. The artist whose work I came across recently that was a kind of catalyst to completing these thoughts that I've been having for a while is a Turkish art designer and illustrator called Murat Yildirim who, from what I understand, has used Cinema 4D to create these digital images and has plans to bring them to life in the future. I just love the idea of taking these really well-known images and making them into something completely different with this beautiful tactile quality of the fur and all the movement that that brings. There is also a British mixed media sculptor called Rowan Mersch, whose work I'm sure you'll probably have seen on the likes of Pinterest, who's created this series of works which all harness this wonderful sense of flow and movement, very precise yet also naturalistic. And initially when I saw this image, I assumed that it was sequins and was like, wow, that is incredible. It must have taken forever to build up that kind of density. However, it turns out that as he's a sculptor, these are made of oyster shell. Now knowing that it's not made of sequins makes me want to make it in sequins even more to try and achieve that sort of effect with a textile art outcome. I developed a similar technique to try and achieve this, which I've had a little bit of practice on with some smaller samples, and now it's time to try it out on a more considered overall outcome. Then later, whilst not looking at things for this project, I came across an old image that I saved because I loved it from a textile artist called Rosamund Hanny, who amongst other gorgeously coloured pieces has this image, which I believe is a technique called pages. And I thought about how well it was sitting against some of the other images that I'm exploring and the themes that are interesting me and clearly have been interesting me for some years now. So the plan is to try and bring all of these themes and influences together into what I hope will be a beautiful sequin outcome. And the vehicle on which I hope to ride all of this is this image I took of the sunset in Da Nang, Vietnam. I came across it in my passport cover video. I really love that dark land coming through the middle, cutting across it. And I kind of think it's just a beautiful image. If I manage to make this ugly, then I really am in the wrong game. So, with all that said, and a sort of plan in place, I think it's high time I got to work.
One of the biggest tasks with this project is going to be the bending of the sequins, which is how I'm going to manage to get a lot of texture into this piece and get them to stand up and look the way that I want from that above view. I'm going to start with that dark land in the centre, which is hopefully going to help me define the piece and give it some natural shapes. And then when it comes to the sky and the sea, they'll be much more about just filling the areas in the most naturalistic way, getting a little bit of a sense of the colour changes and positioning with the clouds that I've marked out, but nothing is too set in stone really. As you can see, I chose to work with a medium weight cotton fabric just because it was what I had and it's really stable and therefore easy to work on. The plan is that it will be totally covered in sequins, so its colour or shade doesn't really matter. The fact that it's blue is helpful because it's one of the colours in my design, but uh, not really too much of an essential with this project as I don't plan on really seeing any of it. I'm working in an 8 inch table clamp frame because this is my favourite sort of frame to work in and hopefully the 8 inches is slightly smaller than my other 10 inch frame and will help me kind of keep this project on track and moving in that slightly smaller circumference as I know that this is probably going to be quite a long project as I am looking to fill it all. I started out by buying 825 sequins which I thought probably wouldn't be enough to finish the project but I was also buying from a new supplier and wanted to see the colours in person first. From the land section I did very quickly run out of black and dark blue sequins so in that land section there is probably about 180 sequins and as you can see I had to stop where I ran out of the right mix so I wouldn't be able to kind of continue with that same distribution of the colours. So now I have moved on and decided to start a little bit of the sky where I want to work in the sun and then start fading the colours out from there. So starting with this yellow section and just working in a mix of the pearly white, pink, light yellow and champagne to try and blend this out nicely. I think the amount of sequins has probably been grossly underestimated in this now and so I'm going to have to look to rectify that and definitely get some more on their way. It's time to prep myself a few more colours as I want to start blending in some of the more blue and lilac tones as I work right across the rest of the design. I am rapidly running out of lots of colours now um, as I'm working along so there is a bit of like jumping about between different coloured areas that I know I'm safe to start a new colour mix in that area without running out of a colour at least for a little while. Getting those colours on their way is kind of the next priority and so I really want to make that new order and get them coming because I'm still really excited about this project and I am really loving the way that it looks. The colours blending together are so pretty and I think because all of the sequins have this wonderful sort of pearlescent quality to them, it's quite hard to pick them out individually as to which coloured sequin is which and they all shine slightly different colours depending on how the light catches them. And it's that aspect of how the light is going to catch them that's going to make this really interesting. As you can see by this point I've really picked up a lot more confidence about how to apply the sequins. 
Initially, when I was starting on the land, you could see that I started at the bottom and I was going to work from bottom to top because that's the way that the sequence had been bent. But very quickly, I worked out that if I wanted to try and establish the lines to follow that of the design and then fill within that, I needed to have sort of borders and then fill areas. By this point where I'm working in the clouds, I really feel like I've got my technique down and that I can work from pretty much any angle. I'm probably about six hours in here and so I found a few extra hours over the coming days to fill in a few bits and this is where I had got to. I had planned to get this project down into one video but it seems that there's quite a lot to cover so you'll have to join me again for the next part of my landscape sequin project. Okay, so... Okay, so...